I do want to, though, before I forget, do we know our signs? Oh, yes. Is my sign just like what my, like where my birthday falls? Yeah. Yeah, that's your sun sign. Oh, okay. Who's kicking it on? <laughs> okay. Drum roll, please. Tell I, for those of you who did not know, am an Aries. <laughs> <laughs> fire sign for sure we take the initiative we are up and going we got adhd (laughs) um i'm also at aries and then i'm listening to what you say that they're like known for and i was like oh the adhd a lot of my stories are like that yeah (laughs) that goes hand in hand with i'm like i am not my sign and then you said that and i'm like you were like, wait, hold on. Yay. Wait, let me think about this for a second. <laughs> um, I am a Sagittarius. So that makes us a fiery podcast, just so you Ooh. know. Is that Sagittarius fire too? Yes. Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo are the three fire signs. Oh. What's I, that mean? I don't know they much just about go well together? Yeah. Yeah, me either. Oh, girl, that's a whole other podcast episode. I'll break down your chart. You give it to me. You give me your birth time, your location. We're going to analyze it. Birth time? Y'all. Yes. Birth time? Yes. yes, so that they know where the planets were <laughs> and the constellation. Like, all of that matters. Wow. That's uh, brand yeah. new information for me. Yeah, I had no idea. Oh, yeah. I just know yeah. I'm an Aries. And now I got ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say good morning, but it's not quite morning anymore. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, ladies. How are we doing today? Good. I'm doing great. Doing good. You? I'm doing good. I mean, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, we just spent the past hour trying to figure out how to do a new setup and make it look nice and pretty because we are girls and we like things to look nice and pretty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, let's just dive straight into today's topic. Me, Ellie, and Alexis have a group chat where we talk about work things, but we also like to just talk conversationally, just girl to girl. And a conversation that kind of sparked was, actually, (laughs) um, who mentioned it? I think it was me. Alexis. Y'all both came at me so quick and were like, what's going on? what what did you do what did someone do to you and i was like ah, nothing it's just a conversation i want to have everything is okay yes <laughs> i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> yes so the topic uh in question it sparked from how hard it is to make friends as we get older as an adult so what made you kind of think about that alexis how did that cross so, your mind actually i recently moved and i think it's something that i'm constantly thinking about i have a friend group back in baton rouge my high school friends honestly some of them go back to elementary junior high that i'm still really close with but since moving finding a new community like sense of community has been really hard yes absolutely um but i mean just listening to y'all talk about it um the first thing that came to mind was Maybe it's because when we're young, we're in um, grade school, elementary school, middle school, high school, and then some for some college. And in those times of our lives are so many chances to meet people and find our cliques and our groups and our style and our personality. But then you get older and some people don't go the college route and some people do. And then after that, then what? You know, it's you're left to find and make friends either in your workplace or if you have a community of some sorts. But if you don't, where do you go to find these new people? And a conversation I've had with, because I'm the youngest out of uh, three girls, and my oldest sisters are six and eight years older than me. And just looking at their dynamic, they're married now, and um, they're always wanting to hang out with the family because they don't, I don't mean this in a rude way, but they like legitimately do not have friends. And, you know, my, my, a conversation I had with them was that, you know, from their perspective, you know, as you get older, you realize you don't need these people. You just have your, your people that you know and trust, and then it starts to dwindle down. But 
does it have to? Do y'all feel like it has to dwindle it down or that it's happened to you? Or how do you, and if, if not, how do you find your community of people? I think it'll be an interesting conversation because Alexis, you're in your 20s. Yes. Not, we're not giving exact age here, but you're in your 20s and then I'm in my 30s. So it'd be interesting to hear your perspective from um, from in your being in your 20s and then being in your 30s. So go ahead, Alexis. Gotcha. Okay, so with that, I think it is an age thing and I think it's what you're looking for in a friend at the age that you're at. Um, I don't have kids. So me and my husband have gone back and forth with if we had kids, would it be easier to make friends? What are we looking for in friends? You know, I don't know, because also your interests change when you get older. So the friends that I have in high school that were like out partying or, the, you know, when I'm looking for a friend in high school, I want to know the person that is getting invited to all the parties. I want to know the person that is friends with everyone. I mean, that's me. I feel like I'm very extrovert when it comes to things like that. Um, but now I'm not looking for friends that are out every weekend in downtown Atlanta at the bars. I I don't know. I And I feel like we started to gravitate towards the friends here. I think I'm kind of st- I'm trying to stay on the path of this conversation, but I'm going to steer off a little bit. But when we're looking for friends here in the neighborhood, this new neighborhood that we're in, we don't know anybody in the state of Georgia. All the interests change, and when since we moved to Georgia in this new house where we don't know anybody in the state, where we tried to, we had a conversation with each other where we were like, well, what are we looking for? Where, what kind of people do we want to be friends with? I wouldn't say it's any easier being the age that I'm at, and I honestly think from here on out, it won't be easier. I think the easiest time that we've ever had making friends was when we were five or six and our parents were signing us up for sports Uh um i'm not signing myself up for sports these (laughs) days and i'm not signing my husband up for any of these things but i think too we're starting to get like i said earlier we're getting into new interests and it's like well what are our new interests and i feel like you have to like re refine yourself or rediscover who you are i don't know if that's the right word if I'm using it correctly but it's what do I want where and I think that's where people get so hard because it's like you cut you start to nitpick these people maybe a little too hard because there's too much pressure on being friends and because I don't want to be lonely here I want to be able to meet people and go to dinner and have fun but we put too much pressure on oh well they were acting like this that one time we saw them up at the pool and I didn't really vibe with that and it's like I think at some point you have to let go and I think that's where a lot of people get hung up on and I don't know if I even stayed on the question but I all that to say is I don't think it's any easier the age that I'm at and I it, I think it's only going to get harder there's my soapbox <laughs> yeah I think honestly in your 30s I'm going to say this right off the bat in Listen, I I think it only gets worse in the sense of I know that I'm at a point where I'm like, cut the BS. I'm not I'm I don't want to do the whole chit chat, like the whole superficial stuff. Like I am over that. I want to get deep. I want to get raw. But at the same time, I can't like I think the the worst part is and what I've seen is being able to open yourself up and be be vulnerable with people because we're not all perfect, right? We all have um, our baggage. We will all fall short. The The problem that you see is when you do get to a point of being vulnerable and you see it in social media, right? You become vulnerable and then it's where the gossip starts. It's where people go behind your back and start talking about what you shared in an intimate conversation that gets um, you know, it's like, you know how the telephone cord, like you start off the story here and by the time the story gets to around everybody else the story is completely different it's not even what happened um and so it's like i i want to cut through all of that and i don't know why and it's it's so interesting it's because and you see in in social media and not to talk about just social media but like i i don't know if it is as you see it as like the older you get the worse it is or the worse some women get 
where it's like you know how like some guys i we joke around because i've seen you know with the boys playing flag football some of the coaches in these flag football fields are like dude i know you're trying to relive your glory days but that ain't it and it's like are some of these women reliving their glory days of high school of what they were in high school and then it's like coming out all over again or i don't know what it is if it's like the that middle stage of life where you're going through the identity crisis and you're trying to find out and it's like all these things and i'm like can we just like can we stop in order to really be able to connect to in a sense do life with each other you have to be able to like this is one thing my sister and i were talking and we were kind of just sharing our struggles and i got to the conversation with her i was like listen i don't know what to tell you i don't even know the right answers but what i will do with you is I will sit with you and I will sit here with you until until you figure it out and I will be here with you, right? And so I think it's like, where where is that? You don't see any of that. It's like people are unwilling to get dirty with you in the times that you need it um, to also build that friendship in so much. And so I, I think you're, you're, you're seeing the lack of that so much and I don't know if it's because of COVID. I don't know if it's because people are just selfish. I think the the the, the hard part is when you do have kids, um, the the reality is you just don't have much time because your your kids become your priority, right? And so most of the days on the weekdays for us, like you're just chugging, you know, all the kids to all the extra activities and sports and all that stuff. And so when everybody is doing that, it's hard to reconnect. But that's where you really have to be intentional. And I won't forget somebody mentioned it in, in the DMs that I was having a conversation with her after we talked about, you know, friendship and why is it so hard being friends when you get older? I think people forget that, you know, you know how marriage take works? Friendship also takes work, you know, and you both have to work at it. You both have to stop and be intentional and make the effort and connect and say, hey, how you doing? How's your day, et cetera, right? And if you don't have that, then you can't have... You, you don't have the friendship. And I really think just everybody is just too busy with everything else. I think that is also why my high school and younger year friends have bloomed into something way better now that I'm older, especially with me moving away. I think they've become better in some sense because you're not, I don't know, I'm not having to hang out with them every day of the weekend as much as I would love that. And I would, I mean, none of us have kids. I actually, one just had a baby last year and he's so cute, but um, we don't really all have to fight with schedules of kids and stuff. And weekly, I call them and it's just kind of a known thing. We're just going to talk for an hour. We're going to say how our day was and it's still very intentional. And I think that's why it's kind of grown as we've gotten older with each other because we've been able, I trust them. I could tell them anything and I know it's not going to be spread around the group. And like Kelly said, like you just don't know who you can trust these days. And I, I you brought up a, I don't know if this is even something that I, I find it to be a very hot topic, but these parents and we battled with it a lot in high school. They, the moms live through their kids. There's yeah. And I think that's where a lot of the cattiness comes from. And it's like, like, Samantha, let these kids live and do their own thing. You don't need the mom drama, drama huh? on top of it. Like, especially, I, I don't know, specifically when we were in high school, the moms would call each other. And then that would start like an all out war with that level of age. I feel uh, age is a big discussion here. But then the kids on the side would be like, yeah, we, we don't really have that big of an issue with each other. Like, why did your mom call my mom? But I find yeah. a lot of the cattiness is them living through their kids. But I, I mean, like I said, only one friend has kids in our high school groups. So we don't really have to deal with that just yet. I'm just speaking from past experiences with, in high school with the drama because I think I've a lot of people that responded to your stories we're saying how catty women are and it's like why are they catty like yeah. if we are all on the same level of wanting friends and wanting to be nice to each other why aren't we where what's the issue here why i just don't 
I just don't get being catty at all. At all. Well, I, yeah, that, that just goes back to what I had responded in the group chat whenever the topic <laughs> yeah. even came up. I, I literally think it stems from them not being satisfied with something in themselves. So they yeah. try to push it through their children, through the people around them, and they project because there's something missing inside deep down yeah yeah because someone truly happy with themselves yeah none of that phases them Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Uh, well yeah to to that point a sense of even when you're when you're content with where you are internally when you see somebody struggling or the idea of or not 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 the idea but when you see somebody struggling what you want to do is you want to pull them up you know, you're not the one to like, oh, I'm going to bring everybody down with me so I can, you know, what do they say? Misery loves company. And I mean, in, in reality, that's true, right? When somebody is miserable, you want every, they want everybody around them to be miserable, right? But when you're content with where you are in life, with who you are, you as an individual, even though you may be working on things, but internally, like you're content, I think, well, you don't have time for that. Right. You know, people, when you're not content with yourself, you know, that just trickles into everything and it trickles into your friendships. Really? Yeah. So fix yourself before you want a friend. Yes. <laughs> if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you supposed to love anybody else? Can I get it? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I think people are not willing to fix themselves. They think that they're fine and they're perfect and they're not the issue. It's like if you cannot find good friends, what kind of friend are you looking for and what can you change to better like i don't like ellie said you want to put into people better you want to make them better you i want to make myself better but if you're not willing to do that then i don't think you're at a place to want friends especially ones that you can trust right and i i think like just to tie all of these thoughts together as ellie mentioned earlier Friendships are another form of relationship. Just the same as romantic, there needs to be trust. There needs to be a uh, foundation. There needs to be vulnerability. Because uh-huh. connecting what Alexa said earlier, there are these friends that we started to grow out of that just only want to go out and party. And, you know, that might be fun to some extent, but if we're doing it all the time and I'm constantly in an environment where I can't hear you and we're just having drinks, and you know, how surface level is that is it? and how how does it fulfill you you know what i mean like i want a friend where we can hang out and go for walks or have dinner or something that doesn't include something that inebriates us you know what i mean i don't a lot of people hi, uh, adults hide behind alcohol as a way to socialize uh, they can't okay. socialize without it and i that's something that you know i've learned i don't I am, I'm not necessarily compatible with and compatibility is a whole thing just like relationships friendships you have to be compatible with them too because yeah. there are some friends that I still have from high school and they've changed so much just like Alexis mentioned in the, in their best way but it's because we're still compatible and I want better for myself and so my friends when I see them doing better for themselves it motivates me and so if I'm surrounded, you are who you surround yourself with. I truly mm, believe that. Mm. Oh, I will never forget. Eh, oh, my gosh. And I tell my kids this now. Now that I'm a mom myself, I used to hate my mom tell me, telling me this when I was in high school. She would always say, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. And I and then I told my kids that I'm like, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. And it's true because the, and the reality is you can be like, oh, I'm going to fix them. I'm going to help them, whatever it is, right? Like, I'm going to save them that hero mentality. Like, no, 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 no. Like, again, who who are your friends? And and I think that the, the, I hope that this inspires somebody in the sense of like, hey, one, check who your friends are. Check who you're surrounding yourself with. And then also be that person that can rely on and be that friend that others can rely on now in the sense of like don't get used and manipulated and abused by other people right but when you're surrounding with yourself yourself with people who genuinely care for people who you know you can confide in confide confide and is that the right word confide 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 
Confide. 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 <laughs> Words are hard. Wow. Confide okay. is to put something in a box. <laughs> like, okay. Not that. But people that you can trust. People that are willing to get, you know, in the dirty with you, that are willing to do life, that are willing to help you when you need it. Um, you know, find those people and most importantly, be those people. Um, it's like, I, I, so also I was talking to my dad today. You know, my dad is in Brazil. My parents are in Brazil. They went and retired and I'm asking him how's retired life. And he's like, oh, it's so much fun. You know, we went out to eat with uh, my aunts and uncles. And he's like, and then I saw your other aunt and uncle. And then we went home. We all took a nap and we met up later again. And I was like, I asked him, I said, wait a minute, are all, is everybody retired? And he's like, no, it's just me and your mom. And I'm like, in my mind, and I just, we were talking. I'm like, you know what? But the interesting is also, again, going back to people make the time. Yes. Like people make the time. I think also a part of the U.S. culture, we're just such a hustle culture people everything is you know we we work we we live to work we don't work to live you know and then like I even I know I'm guilty like I'm always so busy with everything else I'm like I intentionally one of the things that I want to do in 2024 is I want to have more weekly coffee meetups with friends to take the time to invest in the relationships because again um I think, you know, and even as a mom, it's easy for me to wrap myself in the identity of being just a mom. Or if, you know, you're somebody who is a career oriented girl, it's easy for you to wrap your identity in that. But there's so much more to you as an individual than just your career or just your kids. Because the reality is my kids, yes, obviously I'm going to pour into my family and my kids, but my kids are going to leave one day, go to college. They may not be living in the home. They're going to have their own family one day. And, and then what? what do I have left? You know? These relationships that you fostered through coffee dates. Yes. Yeah. And that just, ha sorry, I just led me to a thought. Time is the most precious gift that you can ever give anybody because it's something uh -huh. you can't get back. Uh -huh. I would like to put a disclaimer in yes. here. Yes. <laughs> I, I do love a night out. Oh, me too. I, oh, oh, yes. Too. Girl, me yes. too. <laughs> The occasional vendor, yeah, <laughs> with or without my husband, he's great too. <laughs> we go out on these vendors with friends, and you just relive the glory days. But I'm, it's almost like I can't do these vendors because of my age now, because it takes me a whole week to recoup, recuperate. <laughs> yeah, and my knees, my knees cannot do the things that they. You used are to too young for your knees. <laughs> But, like, I do love the occasional, and I think I, that was, I don't know if that was harsh on my part earlier. I do love to still go out. I Same. do love to still go do the events and go to the concerts Same. and stuff. But it's just, like, it's not an every weekend thing because there are other priorities. And it's, like, I I think your interests have to align and your priorities with these people. Right. Yeah. And I also, I think it's just a matter of balance, too, because, yeah, I love going out just as much as the next person, but that's something I'm trying to learn. That's, I started, I feel like when I was 22 or 23, I was teetering the line of not knowing how to say no to friends yes. and just constantly going out and spending money I didn't have and, like, getting, like, super drunk and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, you don't remember the night or whatever, and, like... How I, I just ran into a point where I was like, okay, this is really not satisfying. I'm waking up really, like, unsatisfied with my actions and also just the physical feeling of it, too, you know? So mm -hmm. I feel like this past couple of years for me is finding balance of don't say no all the time. You deserve some fun. But then also, like, okay, let's draw back a little bit and get ready for adult life <laughs> and all the other responsibilities that come with it you know yeah yeah that's good that you're starting to think that way I don't know because I mean you just graduated I from college I don't know right out of college that I was immediately thinking about that I'm like I'm not an adult yet not until I've got a good job and you know. know well fun yeah. fact <laughs> fun fact and I guess this is the cool part about this podcast. We learn a little bit more about each other, but I was kind of forced to grow up at a, I would say, young age. Like, I had moved out when I was 18 and then was paying for school and 
uh, my own place. Like, and that was really hard. And during yeah. that time, I wanted this freedom so bad, you know, of going out, having fun, no curfew. Because I was 18 with a curfew living at home. And that just, you know, I was like, why am I having to pay my bills like an adult? But I don't, I can't live like one. And yeah. so my mom handed it to me. She was like, you want to be an adult? Go ahead. She let me go. And I experienced what it's like to not, to, to think you have friends to fall back on. But then when you really yeah. need them, no one was there, you know? Mm. And that's not anything on their part. Like some friends do, do just fade out, but but other people, you come to realize they have their own lives at the end of the day. Mm. You know, you really cannot rely on other people. And that's what I learned for myself in those years because I thought I wanted to move out. And then I was living with this guy that ended up not working. And, you know, like you think you know the world when you're young. You think you know it all. You think you know oh, the people around you? You grow right. older and you realize, wow, she... I did not know anything. <laughs> she should have listened to mom. She should have listened to mom, whatever. <laughs> oh, I wish I... See, there's so many sayings when you're younger, you roll your eyes at. Yes. You roll your eyes at and you're like, you have no idea what you're talking about. I wish I listened to my mom. Oh, yeah. I wish I had a curfew. I wish... Like, all these things, I'm like... Like, now... I'm like looking back on and I'm like, why did it take me this long to understand the meaning behind the saying and actually appreciate it? I'm trying to think of some other sayings that I wish uh, Parker, my husband and I were talking literally this week about these things that you've heard a hundred times. And just now as you're getting older, you're like, dang, that's what they meant by that. And yeah. appreciate it a little bit more. I'm like, I wish, but no. Yeah. It just take some time to grow into. But I do, I, we talked about trusting these friends and not getting abused and used by them. Because there is people, there are, there is people, there are people out there that will um, <laughs> use you. Yeah. They you know? see how vulnerable you are to where you want a friend and you need a friend and they'll use you. And I feel like with me having to move away not having my routine of friends here, the ones that I can trust and lean into. I've had to kind of relearn that and figure out, I also want people to trust me here. I want them to know that I am a normal person. I am just wanting a friend. And so I've kind of have to, had to put my foot out there and let these people lean on me a little bit more, you know, with me being home. Oh, you need me to go let your dog out? Oh, I can do that. Like, oh, I just baked a loaf of bread. Like, just kind of feeding into these people to where I think I did. And when I lived in Houston too, I didn't have um, a group of friends there either. I mean, I had one girl that lived across the street and Ellie. Hmm. That seriously, that was like my two friends. I mean, of course I had Parker's family that lived 45 minutes away. And then I have Parker's friends, but it's all just friends from high school. And of course it's nice to fall back one too and go to dinner with them and be invited over to their house, but it's just not a sense of my friends, not people, my own community away from my husband. Because, I mean, I don't know if this is kind of what you were saying too with kids, like kids are going to up and leave one day, and then what do you have? You have your relationship with your husband, and then you have your or spouse, and then you have your relationship with your friends once these kids leave. Yes, I know I will always have my husband and that relationship with him, but it's like, outside of that relationship how how is my relationship with the friends and so when I moved yeah. to Houston I was dealing with that and trusting these people learning that it's okay to ask for help but I don't know do you ask for help with new friends right away listen I have I know I have trust issues I've come to the realization I do and call it just being burned in the past I think I will say this, and I don't. I can't believe I'm actually admitting this on on the podcast. Um, for for all to hear, I'm starting to sweat. But I think I'm all ears. <laughs> and I don't. I don't say this in the sense of of like, oh, pity what I do, right? I think with doing him being a influencer, and I put influencer in quotes because I don't. I don't really like that term. Right? And I think I, I've shared this with Alexis before, but. I'm an introvert also. I don't like being in the spotlight. I don't like 
I am much, much more comfortable in the one-to-one conversation versus multiple people. Um, and so for me, again, I already know I have trust issues. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of that is just me being able, I have to open up myself and I have to also show them that they, there is more than just, you know, uptown with Ellie Brown that, you know, I am Ellie, a mom, you know, a wife, a friend, um, somebody who loves to work out or whatever it is, you know, fill in the blank. And, uh, yeah, all that to say, I know, I know, I know I have trust issues. So the thing is, but there's not, not I want to make sure I word this right, but I don't think there's not anything necessarily like wrong with that because if you know in yourself you are so much more than just the name Uptown with Ellie Brown, the right people will see that too and they'll come to you. You know what I mean? Like your instincts and your intuition was telling you earlier about like the people that you've had a feeling were, you know, the most sincere or genuine and then they proved themselves to be that and it's almost like a thank you to God or, you know, the universe for letting those kind of people let themselves out of your life. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. And all the right people will be aligned to you whenever you have these kind of standards for yeah. not only like uh, romantic relationships, familial, but also platonic. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think I uh, do. This all makes me wish this is probably so weird to say out loud, but I wish there was a way to see how you are outside of yourself, like from oh. someone else's point of view. Like, I wish I could see like once a year, maybe I don't know if it's too much to ask, but maybe once every five years, I just get a glimpse of how I am in public, how I am um, to my husband, to my friends, little snippets. So I, I mean, not everybody's going to want to do that, but I just wish to better myself. I wish I could see that from a different viewpoint to know what I need to change. Am I rude to people, which I try so hard not to be in public or if I'm, did I roll my eyes too hard at the grocery store or, you know, just things like that. Like, I just wish there was a way for me to see how I am from like an outside viewpoint. Right. No, yeah, that would be really cool to be able to see yourself from a different viewpoint. Oh, well. And I guess the closest thing we can get to that is just being self-aware. When we're talking to other people, even when we're by ourselves and no one's in the room, be aware of how we act, our behavior, our thoughts. And because we're, we're the star, like you reap what you sow yes. so let's plant good fruit and all the yeah. sayings i used to roll my eyes at you are who you hang out with <laughs> yes that's <laughs> exactly. a good viewpoint yeah yes <laughs> but um i really appreciate you ladies sharing your thoughts and opinions today i think it was a very valuable conversation that a lot of people probably think about but haven't got a chance to even open up about with the people close to them so hopefully this is uh something that those listening can relate to um but with that being said you know i want to end it off with a note that alexis said and it's how could we be the change and this is for the audience too if you've experienced any of this any of what we've talked about how have you resolved it what would what did you do to be the change what worked for you how right. can we make friends in 2024? <laughs> Give us all the deets, all hell, all the SOS. stories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, um, this was a great conversation and I'm really looking forward to our next. Um, but with that being said, thank you so much, everybody, for listening in. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We, what, what what are we going to talk about next, guys? That's what I was going to say. What's going to be our next topic? Whatever um, comes up in our text thread and we're just like, <laughs> what did they say to you? What what happened? <laughs> I'll start screenshotting it and that's the intro. <laughs> oh my God, this happened. <laughs> Which, no, but this was a really good discussion and I think it needs to happen more often. Yes. Um, in people's lives. I mean, 
like you said, be the change. What can we do to change? What can we do to better ourselves? Are we, the, if you don't like who your friends are, then what to say about you? And how can you change that? Maybe even though and not say about you, but it can say, it can be very much a reflection of them. But then again, it's time to get new friends. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Um, uh. <laughs> okay. Uh. But yes, that was great. Yes. With that being said, sincerely, Kay. Caitlin. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. We- <laughs> oh, that's a good sign off. <laughs> that's it. Sincerely, Kay, or sincerely, Caitlin, Alexis, and Ellie. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Peace. Bye. Bye. Bye.